As we departed Stony Point and headed north, we saw an interesting looking ship on our starboard side. As we got closer, we could see it was a replica of Henry Hudson's Half Moon. It was built in Albany and is docked at Fur Plank. Sherry, what is this up here? Oh, Thunderbird Mountain. It's a densely forested mountain, a uh, thousand feet high, and the legendary dwelling of the Dutch goblin held responsible for summer storms. Oh, hey, that son of a gun might be coming out right. tomorrow. <laughs> we better stay away from him. Yeah. As you see the trains rushing by the Hudson, it's almost like a miniature train set, with them coming and going through the tunnels and running so close to the river. West Point has been a significant location in our nation's history since the Revolutionary War. Both sides knew it was important to control the movement of supplies and troops on the Hudson River. To control the flow of river traffic during the Revolutionary War, a 150-ton iron chain was set between West Point and Constitution Island. However, it was too late to stop the invasion of Kingston. Even Benedict Arnold's treasonous act failed and West Point was never captured. The Academy has very high standards for its cadets in military discipline, honorable conduct, and academic achievement. West Point is also where the Army Corps of Engineers started. For half a century, the U.S. Military Academy graduates were largely responsible for the infrastructure of our nation with rail lines, bridges, harbors, and roads. After World War I, Douglas MacArthur became the superintendent and he is credited with laying the groundwork for the Cadet Honor Committee. And the slogan, every cadet and athlete, became popular. In recent decades, the Academy has expanded its curriculum to meet the ever-changing world and the advances in technology that affect warfare and the defense of our country. This section of the river is called the World's End and is the deepest part of the river. I'm always amazed at the mountains, cliffs, and the depths of this river. Storm King Mountain is on our port side. There was a 30-year battle to preserve Storm King and create a 1,900-acre state park. This case became the basis for our environmental law today in the U.S. Just ahead is Palapinel Island, better known as Bannerman's Island and Castle. Legend has it that a young girl named Polly was rescued from the river ice and later married on the island shore, hence Polly Pinnell. During the American Revolution, an underwater blockade was set up, but the British used shallow draft boats and ran right over it. The Bannerman family history of buying and selling surplus military supplies dates back to the Civil War. After the Spanish-American War, the family's business needed a large and secure location for all of its items that it acquired. And by chance, David Bannerman, while out canoeing, found Palapinel Island, and the Bannermans purchased it from the Taft family in 1900. As the Bannermans were of Scottish descent, they decided to build a replica of a Scottish medieval castle. The castle burned in 1969 and is now off limits, 
Its only occupants are the myths, legends, and ghosts that occupy the island. The Newburgh Bridge is just ahead with the city of Newburgh on our starboard side. There's a marina there and the pride of the Hudson tour boat runs out of Newburgh. As with many of the cities along the Hudson, Newburgh is always developing new programs and attractions for tourists and enhancing its rich history and historic sites. On the northeast side of the river, past Newburgh is Hyde Park and the famous Culinary Institute of America. It produces many of our nation's finest chefs. It was founded in 1946 on the campus of Yale. The American Culinary Federation Education Institute recognized the need for a formal apprenticeship program and a formal education program. In 1986, five programs were accredited, and in 1990, the American Culinary Federation Institute was recognized by the U.S. Department of Education as a legitimate accredited program. Here we can just make out the top of the Vanderbilt Mansion in Hyde Park. Heading north on our port side is the Sophus Meadows, just south of Kingston. The Sophus Meadow Lighthouse sits in one to two feet of water, so it's advisable not to get too close. Round out creek. Round Out Lighthouse stands proud and magnificent. To get a better look, we stopped at the entrance and floated around for a while. Round Out Creek is wide and has plenty of water with an average mean low water of over 10 feet. There are several marine facilities on the creek. staying at is uh, just down by the railroad bridge. I just saw somebody who better slow down or they're going to get a ticket for throwing a big wake. 